Hey, how's it going? And after 14 years, Microsoft and Asobo Studios have released the latest version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And oh boy, have they released a gem of a game slash simulator. Uh, the scale and amount of detail they have packed in this game is absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, to put it into perspective, the game on top of the 110 gigabytes you have to download directly onto your PC has a whole 2 petabytes or 2 million gigabytes full of cities, airports, mountains, whatever, uh, just waiting somewhere on Microsoft Cloud servers uh, just for you to stream directly onto your computer. It actually relies on streaming so much that there is a data cap option in the menu so that it can warn you if you're about to go over your ISP's monthly limit if you're playing too much. On a technical level, this thing honestly hurts my head just thinking about it and is definitely a glimpse at to what the next generation of games has to offer. Because even with the best of like current generation hardware with like a 2080 Ti, will struggle to run this game at 1080p maximum settings, making this, at least in my opinion, probably the hardest game to run right now and probably dethroning and making a new can it run crisis meme as this thing just melts through any PC hardware you throw at it. Which brings me to the PC you see in front of you. Uh, this little guy only costs $325 or $324.49 if you want to be exact. And if you're looking to purchase a gaming PC on a tighter budget, this might be a pretty good option. Everything was purchased online and most parts are brand new with the exception of a few items, which I'll get to later on in the video. Now, I didn't build this PC specifically for Flight Simulator, but since the minimum specs were pretty similar to this PC, I felt like it was a good opportunity to see how well a budget system would perform with this game. Alright, now getting to the actual specs of this PC, uh, the CPU we have here is a 9th generation Coffee Lake i3-9100F. This is a quad-core chip that was only $75 on Amazon and was one of the main reasons why I wanted to build this system. Uh, Intel has always been known for their single core performance and having four of those cores at 75 bucks feels like it should make for a decent gaming CPU, especially for the money. For RAM, I've gone with 8GB of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 memory. Uh, this is a 2x4GB kit and is running at 2400MHz. Uh, I picked this thing up for 30 bucks on eBay and should get us to the minimum requirements for Flight Simulator. Now, our CPU and RAM are going to be housed in an ASUS H310 motherboard. Uh, this board is only 56 bucks on Amazon, and it'll pair with our i3 very nicely as it came out of the box uh, with the latest BIOS to support the CPU. Other features include two RAM slots, an M.2 slot, which is nice to see at this price point, two USB 3.1 ports in the rear, and that's about it. Uh, this board is definitely an entry-level board, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, given ASUS reputation for building quality motherboards, I feel like this is a really solid entry-level Intel board. For storage, we have a 120GB M.2 SATA SSD to install Windows on. This was only $18.99 on eBay and should definitely get us by for installing Windows and installing maybe a few or a handful of games on this drive. Even though this is a cheap DRAM-less SSD, I still can't stress enough the importance of having a SSD as your boot drive as it just makes booting up the system and just general navigation around Windows a night and day difference between using a traditional spinning hard drive. Which we will use for storing games on, uh, because 120 gigabytes is not enough, but this used Western Digital 500 gigabytes for $16.99 should do the job. Uh, I picked this up on eBay and while it is a used hard drive and was probably a decommissioned server drive, eBay has a pretty good return policy and if if the drive's not working properly, you can usually send it back for either a replacement or just get your money back outright. Now, running these games today will be an RX 470. Uh, RX 470 and 570s are still a great little sub $100 card that is very capable of playing games at around 1080p with usually med medium settings. Uh, these things can be had for uh, pretty cheap on the used market thanks to the GPU mining bubble that popped a couple years ago. And that's actually the version I have here. Uh, the version I have here is a 4GB DVI output only mining version uh, that I picked up for only $75 uh, used on eBay. Now, even though this is a used mining card, uh, I would still suggest looking into these things as they're pretty cheap for the money and uh, if something is wrong with it, you can usually ask the seller for either an exchange or if that doesn't work out. Like I said, eBay's got a pretty good return policy and you can usually get your money back if all else fails. 
Uh, this thing came a bit dirty out of the box, but after a good clean and a refresh of the thermal paste, these things are pretty much plug and play and come ready with uh, game ready drivers. For a power supply, I picked up an EVGA 450BR. This is an 80 plus bronze power supply that I picked up for only 17 bucks on a midweek madness sale. Uh, if you go to EVGA's website on Wednesdays, you can usually find them having a weekly sale where you can find some pretty cheap items uh, of their inventory. And finally, all of our components are stuffed into a deep cool matrix 30. At 35 bucks, this is an awesome little budget case and I can highly recommend it. So how well does it run Microsoft Flight Simulator? Well, I ran a couple benchmarks in different locations to get an idea of how this system would perform. And for the most part, it went well. The first two benchmarks are landing scenarios and the first one is located in the Bahamas, uh, which not much around besides a couple buildings, the beach, and a pretty nice sunset we were seeing pretty solid frame rates. Uh, and at, we saw an average of 53.5 FPS to be precise, and paired that with a 1% low of only 31.4% uh, FPS. And you have here a, a very enjoyable experience, uh, especially flying around the different islands. Now, the next benchmark and landing scenario I tested was the Toronto one. Uh, this one was a bit more demanding as loading a city with a large number of buildings seems to be very taxing on the system. I ended up having to run this test multiple times as the more times I ran it, the better the better results I got. With the first run, I saw an average of 38.4 FPS with pretty noticeable frames drops as our 1% low was a measly 1.3 FPS. Uh, but when I reran the test, the system performed much better. With an average of 46.6 FPS and a 1% low of 18.4 FPS, this is a much more playable experience and is either due to a memory limitation as 8 gigabytes might not be enough for the system at the moment, or maybe it's just a slow hard drive. Because Microsoft does recommend installing this game on an SSD to speed things up, uh, but either way, this is a pretty common theme when testing out this game, and unfortunately, uh, cities seem to be a lot more demanding than initially thought. Now, the final benchmark I set up is a custom flight where I left from Spokane International Airport and landed at Seattle Tacoma International Airport. Having lived in Washington for the past 10 years, this is a bit of fun for me as I traveled through the state many times and it was pretty cool to see this flight done through the game. Uh, the flight's about 25 minutes and includes a nice mixture of large open areas, mountains, and uh, dense cities, making this a decent run that should include a bit of everything. With that in mind, this PC actually ran it well. Uh, with an average of 53.3 FPS, most of the flight went well as the game ran smoothly across Washington. Uh, it wasn't until the Seattle area and loading a city that we saw some pretty noticeable frame drops and the system was struggling to load the game. Uh, the 3.5 FPS we got in the 1% lows was definitely due to this area and can be a bit problematic when trying to, trying to land, uh, but still doable. And keeping that in mind, you might have to avoid some larger cities if you're running a PC close to the minimum specs of this game. Uh, but for the most part, it's still extremely playable at 1080p low settings. Uh, this game has a ton to offer, and as long as you avoid some of the larger cities, you're going to have a pretty good time running with uh, this system. Now, I also tested some other games just to see what this thing can do. Uh, in Modern Warfare, I was able to get a triple kill multiplayer. And after 5 minutes of gathering loot in Warzone, I was immediately shot in the back by someone camping behind a bus. But at least we were averaging 87 FPS at 1080p low settings, which is pretty good. In Rocket League, I lost 2 to 7 to some pros, but was averaging 169 FPS at 1080p. Nice. And in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, we saw an average of 55 FPS, which is really good for 1080p medium settings. And actually, uh, the benchmark was showing that we were seeing a significant GPU bottleneck. So in theory, we could just plop in a better GPU down the line and see some significant gains. All right, and that's going to be it for me today in the benchmarks. I had a ton of fun checking out Microsoft's latest flight simulator and some of the other games that I tested out for this PC. Was really surprised how well that i3 performed, especially at 75 bucks. You're really getting a good value there uh, for a budget system. And we'll definitely have to see how well this will perform with some more powerful GPUs. Anyway, thanks so much if you made it this far. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and hopefully you have a nice day. Take care now.